VKC9, VKV. Good morning, Lou. Alrighty, what kind of signal are you getting back on this machine? Uh, getting eight lights back, eight lights. Yeah, I take it that's on your set of beams, correct? Oh, Roger, I don't have anything else but beams. Roger, Roger. I had a QSO uh, night before last, or last night. I forget they all run together. But uh, uh, about uh, 30 miles south of uh, Bonneville, uh, all the way to Indianapolis. It was about four hours. Uh, Roger, Roger. Yeah, um, we did uh, the Bonneville repeater uh, trade off to the uh, E-Town repeater, trade off to the uh, 940 repeater, uh, and then for a short time then went to the 850, and then to uh, this one uh, to uh, Indy. The bad part about it was that uh, I didn't uh, document it. <laughs> I did not uh, roll tape on that one. Um, we're going to try to uh, get that one here in the next uh, few days and get get it documented. Uh, I'm sure that's uh, some kind of, uh, well, I don't know if it's a record or not, but it's uh, certainly interesting. Mr. Roger for uh, I was uh, curious about uh, you know your latest uh, topic on the uh, at the meetings there you were doing what was that you were doing oh uh, this last meeting we talked about transmitter combiner a transmitter combiner it started off with uh, uh, tuned highly tuned circuits and leading into how cavities and Combiners and uh, duplexers and all that stuff are engineered. Oh, Roger for and and this would be um, for uh, more for a repeater operation than uh, a regular uh, ham uh, uh, operation. Pretty much so. Yeah, yeah. You know, you you come on the need on a uh, on a commercial tower. And you got to have multiple tenants, and, and what's the most efficient way of uh, getting the maximum use of the uh, the tower? And by sharing one receive antenna to all the different receivers, now they're all in the same band, right? And uh, then the same thing for transmitters, because each uh, each repeater is a talk channel. So uh, I gave an example of my sites that have uh, anywhere from four to nine radios four to nine transmitters is there's two sticks up there at the top of the tower one's the receive and one's the transmit 
the receiver comes down and goes to distribution box and uh, receive signal sent to all the uh, the nine or ten repeater channels and the transmitters are all combined through what we call a transmitter combiner which I showed off we had one taken apart and so then you got ten radio transmitters all tied into the same common antenna lead going up to the top antenna and uh, that's how you can get ten simultaneous users on uh, a pair of sticks and then the next thing we'll do is we'll uh, we'll go into duplexers and uh, how we use them on the repeaters for single channel use oh, roger that now uh the combiners uh for the uh, transmit uh, situation, uh, those uh, do represent some uh, uh, degradation of uh, signal from each transmitter to the antenna because of the combiner? Yeah, you always have insertion loss, most definitely, insertion loss. Uh, but you're talking about half a dB. And they are tuned devices to tune to each individual channel. They all have to, everything has different frequencies, right? Oh, Roger, so then uh, they have to be uh, separated by at least uh, X amount of, uh, of uh, frequency spectrum to be able to uh, uh, be tuned individually to uh, lock the other ones out of that uh, situation? I'm just surprised that there would be only a half a dB of insertion loss uh, uh, and then get uh, 10 individual uh, capab uh, transmit capabilities out of the, that combiner, you know. That's really amazing. So in the combiner, they, uh, they peak the, uh, the uh, uh, frequency that the, that particular transmitter is on and then uh, null the other, or how does that go? Roger, and then the uh, insertion loss for the uh, receivers is also about a dB? Well, the receivers actually have a tower top amplifier, pre-amplifier, so uh, it's automatically uh, generating a much bigger signal coming down the coax, so that's uh, almost uh, a moot point there. Roger, so you're almost going into a DA amp uh, situation before the, d the uh, dividers? Yeah, exactly, exactly. The antenna has a short lead going to the tower top amplifier. It has its lightning protection and its bandpass filters and the preamp uh, signal amplifier and then sends it on down the coax which because of that it can use smaller coax like a half inch whereas the transmitter is like an inch and a half, inch and five eighths uh, coax because also uh, each channel is at 100 watts so you can imagine that at my uh, at my uh, which one is it, Henryville? <laughs> you know it's pretty bad I can't remember all my sites uh, that's why I got it all written down. I think it was uh, 
Henryville's got uh, seven or nine transmitters, so we're getting almost up to a thousand watts combined power. Roger. Now, does uh, does desense uh, tend to be more difficult uh, since you're using that uh, preamp, or is it that uh, you use the preamp and then divide all those uh, ten receivers, and so by the, uh, the the end of the game, the receiver is just getting about uh, normal uh, RFN, uh, so desense is not a problem. These were uh, uh, operations that had been uh, uh, de, uh, de, de uh, used. Whatever you call that, de uh, what is the word? Yeah, decommissioned. But the people that had these in-building repeaters, factories, and stuff did not know, you know, about the uh, the rebanding. They just bought phones, and that's all there is to it. Uh, so uh, we'd find those bandit. Uh, uh, repeaters and just simply had to unplug them and uh, that took care of the issue but we had to find out who where and where that was the hard part it didn't show up contiguously the problem would show up uh, obviously uh, like at night time a lot and um, so they would gather enough information for us to start the hunt and then we put the direction finding equipment on board and uh, go down there and and we found it. I worked with a Motorola guy on two different separate occasions and um, did pretty good. Wow, that's that's uh, interesting. You actually had to do uh, uh, a direction finding uh, operation to uh, track those down. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of uh, other filtering out. I mean, you know, you're uh, you're trying to find this weak bandit signal at ground level. It's kind of weak. When you're up there in the tower, it's kind of strong. And uh, so that's another thing that makes it difficult is you're almost almost to the point of a needle in a haystack because of the haystack being the RF noise and the needle being the one banded signal you're looking for. Uh, Roger, and what uh, frequencies did this involve? This was at the 850 megahertz frequency band. Roger, and did you always know to uh, go uh, south? Did you ever have any uh, that came from the north or east or west? Uh, not in my case. Not in my case. Everything was interfering with Floyd's knobs. So one was there in Jeffersonville, and the other one was in uh, Shepherdsville. Oh, Roger. And these were like uh, uplink uh, frequencies to uh, uh, a, another uh, repeater? Well, they were supposed to be uh, in-house uh, uh, repeaters, if you will, for the cell phone business back in the day. And um, they got rebanded, the flip-flopped uh, the 800 and 860 band. And uh, so then they, after a while, they heat builds up. These things were notorious for running wild and generated spurious signals. So it was kind of you know, almost like self-oscillating. Roger, Roger. And uh, this conversation is uh, coming to us courtesy of the uh, 
uh, North Vernon repeater, PL 103.5. Uh, those guys have been doing a, a tremendous job as far as uh, getting that uh, their repeater uh, in service, and uh, it's uh, got a very, very large footprint now. I'm sorry. <laughs> now that I look at my radio, there is no T. Uh, this is an untoned repeater. Uh, let me, uh, I will have to uh, correct my notes, Roger. Yep, yep. Well, I'm surprised. I just passed, a, I don't know what little creek it was up here, and uh, it looked low. It looked awful low. I guess they didn't get as much water up here as we did down south. Mercy. Roger now is up around uh, Vernon and uh, North Vernon and uh, around up there uh, yesterday and there, there was quite a bit of water uh, over on uh, 3 or off of 3, Roger. That's correct. Yeah, they had it on the weather report 3 and 7 and uh, then the other day, what, Saturday, I think, um, the weather services, there was no tornado. It was uh, straight wind damage. Okay, <laughs> well, I'm um, sorry, but if the damage equates to the same, um, I don't care what you call it. And they, people did have pictures of a, uh, a funnel cloud, but it was obscured by the trees to see whether it touched the ground or not. Well, guess what? I don't care if it touched the ground. You see a funnel cloud, that's close enough for me, right? Yeah, I'll be going uh, 90 degrees to that object for sure. I'm not going to try to outrun it. I'll be going to 90 degrees. Hopefully that'll uh, solve the problem quicker than <laughs> trying to outrun it. But anyway, um, talking about uh, this this repeater, um, is there? there's a 70-centimeter uh, uh, repeater on the same stick, isn't there? I believe so, and I can't remember the frequency off the top of my head. Yep, and uh, I know that this is the new Bridgecom repeater. I don't know what they did, if they changed anything out for the UHF. Oh, Roger that. Uh, typically, I've noticed that this repeater might be just slightly low level, but uh, audio-wise, but uh, your your audio is slightly above average, so it's, it's working out uh, perfectly <laughs> this morning. Roger, I did hear uh, an announcement uh, earlier uh, with this guy talking about what was the uh, the phraseology you used as far as the new uh, uh, transmitter or, or uh, repeater? Uh, the repeater controller box, a separate controller that takes the audio from the receiver and reconditions it, and you can do other stuff add-on and send it to the transmitter. Uh, no, I was talking about uh, this uh, particular repeater. What's the name of it? Oh, Bridgecom. Bridgecom. Yeah, I think they work uh, the Bridgecom word into this phraseology of whatever the guy says, you know. Uh, uh, it's about a little 10-second spiel. It's not your normal uh, ID, uh, VO, you know. He, uh, I remember Bridgecom in there, though. Roger, Roger. What's your approximate uh, location now? Edinburgh, Edinburgh exit, Indiana. That would be exit 76, 76. 
Uh, about how many miles to uh, Indy from where you are? Oh, about 30. Roger, and about how many miles from the repeater would you say? Roger. Well, I know uh, firsthand that repeater's uh, pretty good up to uh, probably about 10 miles out of Indy, I, I think. Yeah, I know uh, I made it into Indy, but uh, a lot of times I'm then, once I get on the 465, I'm concentrating on the traffic, so not hanging out on the radio. Roger that. Uh, well, between now and then, uh, maybe uh, I was just curious uh, if you could uh, give a report card on the uh, new uh, uh, Yezu, Yezu uh, Fusion uh, repeaters. Are they uh, all that they're cracked up to be? Any problems? Well, I'm odd man out. I'm the one that doesn't have any problems. I uh, hear other people talk about their problems, which I have not been able to duplicate on our repeaters. However, I'm not going to put them through the heat test as far as put them in a 120 degree environment and in a zero degree environment and all that. Our repeaters are in controlled environments, so uh, that's, uh, for me, that's a moot question. They uh, operate, uh, they sound good, they operate great. Uh, I can't do anything to improve it, so um, now, you know, we're not doing an awful lot with the digital, but me and John, Shane did try out the digital side when we first put it up, and at, uh, at the full digital spectrum, uh, I can't remember whether they call it D1 or D2, whatever, the digital, where it uses the wide band portion, it sounds super great. Uh, when you do the half rate, it sounds uh, a little bit more robotic. You can tell a difference between full rate and half rate, but full rate sounds great. Roger. And those machines are also capable of text. Is that a Roger? Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, um, the, the powers that be won't let me give it a, uh, a DSO or an internet link. Uh, you know, the, like we do with the other services, I could drop a line out from the microwave and, and um, give it a, uh, a link up to our station and drop it back out at ND and hook it to whatever services. We're just not allowed to do that. We have the physical capability, but uh, not allowed to do it. Roger, Roger, and that uh, probably also holds true for uh, uh, Yezu uh, wire, Wires X capabilities? Yeah, now what a lot of people do that, like us, that can't hook the actual repeater to the internet or the Wires X box is to do it remotely from a control station. Um, how does that work? Well, it's just like uh, you at home there. Uh, you'll have a, uh, a Yesu digital capable radio and hook with the Wires X box to your internet facilities, right? And your station then will be uh, just like I'm talking to you, but instead of talking to you, I'm going to be able to digitize through you to your station that hooks us up to the internet and then relays it back out to the radio, the repeater so it gets broader coverage. KC9, VKV. Transmit, or the channel guard, the, the tone, the subaudible tone transmit, not transmit. It has 
to have it one way or another during an ID. It's a little, little small issue. Roger, I think that was on the uh, 443-300, right? Is that a Roger? I believe it was. Yep, yep, yep. I think what it come down to is that since he's remote in, when the repeater IDs, uh, he'd like to have it to where the tone is not transmitted so it doesn't activate his receiver that's hooked to the wires X box. That way, that repeat ID is not going out over the internet. Roger that. Roger that. Yeah, well, you know, uh, come uh, push to shove, uh, you could always get a uh, a 1KC uh, a filter relay, and uh, every time that 1KC or whatever tone it is that comes up, uh, it uh, mutes it uh, from going into the uh, Wires X device. Yeah, that cuts out some others too. Uh, but Bill was saying that uh, other people have complained about that to Yesu, and supposedly Yesu has a fix. However, the repeater has to be shipped back to them to be modified. It's not something that we can do over the, uh, you know, like the software upgrade via the internet. Uh, Roger. Now, um, as an experiment, I'm going to flip over to my uh, DVX uh, uh, noise uh, decode and uh, readjust levels here. Hang on just a second. Okay, I'm on the uh, DVX noise reduction. Uh, come back and give me a, a little uh, verbiage there. I got you. Got you uh, loud and clear there. Now you're uh, being uh, decoded in DBX, so it's cutting out uh, about 90% of the uh, residual noise background. KD9IGU, 30 mile marker, southbound. Roger, roger. Go ahead there. Roger, Roger, IDU, IDU uh, copy you uh, pretty well, uh, a couple of drops there, but uh, your, what was your location again? I copied your Crothersville, you, you were really choppy that time, Roger, Roger. This is KC9, VKV. And this is N7 BBW. Yeah, I knew you. I don't know if you got any more coals to put on the fire, but uh, uh, I'm thinking I'm able to work it a little bit further south, and then uh, you'll drop out of this machine, which is in North Vernon. I'm already, every once in a while, I'll, I'll get a little short dropout due to coverage. I get some interference there, and then it comes straight back. So it was hard for me to say whether the dropouts was at uh, IDU in, IDU's end or my end. So uh, you're more steady and able to tell uh, tell about that, Jim. Go ahead. Uh, Roger, it was his drops. Uh, he was uh, very marginal on the last transmission. Lou, your signal is just uh, just fine, no drops at all. Uh, I'm uh, my signals dropped from five lights to about three, but I'm still copying the mail. Back up to four lights now. So IDU, are you still with us? Kilo 
Delta 9, Indy, Golf, United. Yeah, we're still out here. Uh, we're, uh, we're running a very small antenna. We're going to take care of that today, though. Hi, do you? Uh, you know, your, your audio might be uh, causing you to drop out there. It's really, really hot. Maybe uh, back off on your mic. You might be overdriving your PL. Roger, Roger. About half the distance uh, uh, that you were coming about half the distance uh, from where you were just then. Okay, there's about three inches, three inches away. I'd say you could go to two inches. <laughs> it was just really hot there earlier. Roger, Roger, before you go, do you have a specific run, or are you just uh, traveling around? No, I, uh, I'm just going to work here this morning, over. Oh, Roger, get Roger, Roger, well, give a shout any time. We, uh, we uh, use this repeater quite a bit. So have a good day. Uh, catch you later. Roger, Roger. You got a Jim here and a Lou, uh, Lou one on the other end. Yeah, Jim. Uh, I run a 19-inch whip all the time. 19-inch whip for both VHF and UHF out of my mobile, so uh, I have pretty good luck with it. And uh, you're down south now to the coverage of the uh, 146.850. 146.850, and like this one, it does not have a tone, no tone required, so uh, if we're not, uh, we're on this one as we travel north to Indy, but most of the time we're out there on the 85, so I uh, don't know how far down to work you got to go, but below Seymour, the 85 works, you're in coverage of the 85 below Seymour, N7 BBW, 87 mile marker, and that, that other station, uh, I guess you weren't overdriving your PL since uh, this repeater's not using a PL. <laughs> so uh, I guess you would just uh, a marginal signal there a couple of times. Yeah, I'm not sure what frequency I'm uh, transmitting on. I've got down here on this radio that I'm, I'm talking Scipio, so I wasn't sure. Um, what other channel are you using up there, uh, Lou? Because I travel north a lot. Uh, what other frequency do I need to look for? Well, first of all, do you have a dual band radio or are you UHF capable? Uh, negative, not at this time. Uh, we have one, but I don't have it installed. It's just a plain two-meter radio. Yezu FT-1802. Okay, okay. Well, that limits it down then. Um, usually they have, uh, we have some wide area repeaters that are on UHF. Um, this one, uh, the 145.250 machine is in North Vernon. And uh, it'll work all the way up into Indy. And uh, then the, uh, come on, we have 146.700 and one, boy, Jim, I'll have to fill you in on all those. I'm mobile, but you'll need something to write down because they'll have tones on the rest of them. So uh, for tone-free, easy tiling, uh, this one works. But I get on this one from Seymour up to Indy. And below Seymour, I'm on the 
850. Again, uh, that's nice because you just dial the frequency in and your radio automatically gives you the offset. No tone is required. But uh, there are some others that uh, would require you to write down the frequencies and the tones. And Jim will be able to give them to you, so you'll have to let him know if you're in a position to write anything down. Go ahead. Yeah, we uh, we we made it to work here. So uh, if he's got the time, I'll uh, I've wrote some of those down. But uh, go ahead, Jim. Uh, Roger. Now uh, you're going. Uh, which way are you going to be on? Uh are you traveling through uh, 65 uh, to, towards uh, Nashville or in this area? Uh, most of the time I'm uh, traveling Scott County to uh, northern Indianapolis there, Lebanon. That, that, that's my normal travel, everyday travel. So... Uh, I wasn't sure, uh, you know, how I could, you know, maybe link back down, you know, closer to uh, some friends of mine that's in Seymour, Indiana. Roger. Well, I, you've got the Seymour repeater frequencies, right? Roger. Yeah, I seem to uh, about, of course, like I say, today I'm going to take care of the antenna issue, and hopefully it makes it a little better. But about the, uh, I'm wanting to say about the 82 mile marker, I lose the Seymour machine. Uh, Roger, Roger. Well, I don't have anything uh, too much uh, better for you north than this uh, North Vernon repeater. Now, if you come south, you know, you've got the uh, Louisville repeaters. If you've got 70 centimeters, uh, you've got uh, 444 200. Uh, PL is 67, I believe. Off the top of my head there. Let's see here and look, look that up. Yeah, uh, 444 200, uh, PL 67. That's a, a good uh, 70 centimeter, Roger. Okay, Roger that. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure what frequency. That I'm coming to you. Can you uh, relay? This radio is second hand and it has Scipio. Scipio channel 3. And I I haven't quite figured out how to push a button and then tell me what frequency. It's just got it listed as uh, the, you know, the, the town or the city on there. All right. Uh, the frequency that you're on right now, the repeater that you're on is 145. Dot two five zero one four five dot two five zero North Vernon, Indiana. No PL. Okay, that might be my problem. Uh, the offset negative button is on, and the tone light is on on this channel. So. I'll have to dig around at that, and uh, maybe it'll talk to it just with the offset on and the tone uh, is on. Maybe it just doesn't care if it's on or not. No, it, it doesn't care, it, you know, that you're not running the PL uh, or that you are running the PL. It doesn't have one, so it doesn't, uh, doesn't care if you're doing it or not. Uh, if you're not getting interference from the... Uh, from the repeater that you have the peel on, uh, just leave it the way it is. And then when you get in the vicinity of the other repeater, uh, your PL tone will open that one up so you don't have to change anything, you know? Okay, roger that. All right, well, uh, I'll give you guys a, uh, a listen in maybe tomorrow morning, see if I hear you, and hopefully we'll get this, uh, I bought a newer antenna, dual band antenna, as we uh, grow into, a, uh, I see the need to having the uh, two band radios in the vehicle, so uh, we're leaning that direction, we're going to start with antenna first, so uh, I'm going to say 73s, i got to get to work, uh, KD9, IGU, 
We'll be clear with you guys. Thanks. Roger, Roger. You'll probably find us on the uh, 146 850, 146 850, no PL, or the uh, 146-940 uh, with a PL of 67. Those two are our main uh, repeaters in this area. That's where we normally are, Roger. Roger, Roger. Casey, 9 vkv Lou, how are you, where are you now? Roger, Roger, you were uh, kind of breaking up. I think we may be uh, towards the end of the line. Uh, what do you think there? I'm sorry, we might have doubled right at the end. You are uh, kind of dropping out. Uh, are we, uh, do you have uh, more uh, tin can or are we about done here? Roger, I think I think we're about out of range, Lou. I think we are about out of range. So let me say threes up that way, and I'll let you uh, start uh, concentrating on your driving. Roger, Roger. Roger, Roger. Threes, KC9, VKV, Claire.